<laughs> I succeeded. <laughs> wow. Hello, Patrick. How are you? You see, I'm just thinking it's going to work. It's not, you know? So, <laughs> <laughs> calling my friend, calling my friend. You, how you do the live in Instagram, you know? <laughs> really? Calling my daughter, calling my daughter, yeah? Oh, my God. Yeah. Happy Father's Day. How are you? How are you doing? I'm fine. I'm fine. Thank you very much. I'm so excited to be part of the, this project. Hold on. Oh, let me. Oh, oh shit. Very well. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're, we, we're going to wait five minutes. Huh? Five, uh, good five minutes. And, yeah. And uh, we start. Yes, thank you. Thank you for to be, to be with us, really. Um, it's, it's a big honor for me, honestly, being a part of this project. Absolutely. It's a great honor. Thank you so much. And thank you for uh, our common friend, um, Josh Gunnar also. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He's always around. Huh? He's always around us. <laughs> Josh Kun. <laughs> always. Always. He's a magic. He's a magic person. <laughs> yes. And I studied a little bit about this project. And of course, you um, and Josh Kun were here uh, two years ago uh, for the exhibition in Besiktas. Yes, uh, that's how we met. I mean, sorry, I didn't hear what you say. The last sentence. We met in Besiktas. I mean, a uh, couple of years ago. Yes, uh, yes you did. guys had an exhibition here. Yes, we did. We we yeah. had um we had a live with you in Ankara, if you remember. Of course. Um, yeah. Gejabakushi so TRT. Were in 2017, and then we met each other in the in the Exodus Deja Vu in Istanbul. Yes. So actually, you. Yeah. I was so lucky. You've been, you've been following Exodus for some time. <laughs> I'm so lucky. So you, how is your Turkish? You, you spend quite time in Turkey, right? Yes, yes, yes. How many years? Uh, my, my daughters are Turkish. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Two, two yes. kids, right? Yes, yes. So okay. I, I, yeah, I spent I spend, I spend many years. Many years. So you speak Turkish? Biraz, biraz. Allah'a kurban. Harika. <gülüyor> evet. e, kan çıkmazsa para yok. Karpuzcu ne diyor? Kan çıkmazsa para yok. Oh. Uh, my first wife, I mean, uh, who is a journalist in Washington, D.C., she mm -hmm. spent two and a half years in Turkey, and we lived together here uh, two years. No, yeah, two and a half years. Okay, we spent two and a half years in Turkey. And she started learning, of course, Turkish uh, at the street on, on the street. And she said, uh, one day she came to me. I mean, she said, I learned a couple of words. I mean, what did you learn? She said, uh, uh, <laughs> I said, don't don't ask to people like that. I mean, you know, means are you single? No, she said, could you look at me? Bakar mısınız? But the accent is not really easy to, to express yourself. You know, I mean, uh, spelling the Turkish word especially uh, makes some accident. So anyway, and then one day she said, Kan çıkmazsa para yok. What? She said, Karpuzcu told me. <laughs> Kan çıkmazsa para yok abla. <laughs> Means, I mean, you know, uh, definitely like the color uh, going to be bloody, you know, looks <laughs> bloody. Oh my God, it's a hard my, language. My, something. Yeah, my my Turkish is. Uh, I, you know, this is a this is a beautiful language, by the way. Turkish is a beautiful language, and I, I, I still have the the, the opportunity to go to study Turkish. You, you need to study Turkish. You need to study the language. You need to Absolutely. spend some time. And um, yeah, so but I I understand. I understand. I I have to say yeah. I have to say that I understand um, quite well. So to express. My, that's my uh, It's not easy. Yeah. To yeah. express, I, I mean, pronunciation is not easy sometimes. And people are laughing, you know, and so you get shy and a little bit nervous to use that word. So uh, that's why you stop, you know, uh, using that language. Uh, based yeah. on my experience in, in the United States, for the first couple of years, I get so uh, excited and also nervous to say what I learned, what I know. And one time I made a mistake. I said, um, can I take a 
massage uh, massage and I mean, she, she, one of my colleagues I mean, she said I mean you have to better to take massage from your your partner get a message message for me <laughs> message massage oh my god I mean you know uh, so funny. anyway let's make me remember Pink Panther you know the film Pink Panther in the, in the film is like yeah. massage message you know? <laughs> and the Panther so Patrick okay. uh, you are in Malaysia right now. Yes, I'm Kuala Lumpur. It's seven o'clock here in, seven, in uh, Kuala Lumpur. The the sun is um, going down. Rising. Mm -hmm. The sun is rising right now. It's morning, right? Uh, yeah, it's it's going to seven a.m. soon. It's already seven o'clock. Oh, now. oh, seven seven p.m. Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, are we ready? Uh, yes. Yes. Sure. Of course. Great. Okay. And, and by Great. the way, I, hello everybody. Hello everyone. Um, I think we have a lot of people coming in, and um, it will keep going. So uh, welcome to everyone. And um, okay, let's let's start. Okay. Hold on. All right. Let's be quiet. The First moment. of all, I would like to uh, thank you very much, Patrick, for giving me a place in this year's activities of this very valuable and extraordinary project and i know you are a father you just mentioned your daughter uh, lives in turkey and i would like to say happy father's day patrick uh, of course you, father's so, day to everyone with a hearted heart and today is a world refugee day is the day of reckoning and today we commemorate people who escape uh, from persecution, who are um, torn from their homes all around the world and who are subjected to violence and, and let's say, oppression. So every human is another world. Uh, and, and also, the way you see the world reflects your uh, humanity. I, that's what I believe. Refugees testify to the um, darkest phase of the uh, new type of coronavirus. Uh, they are now trying to survive uh, the speed, uh, the corona in the borders of the countries they went uh, to end. Uh, and the camps in their countries, uh, hoping for a better life. You may struggle, but you will never quit. That's your daughter's wife, I mean, mother's uh, word. Uh, that's what I learned from her uh, message uh, on the Instagram message. Uh, your ex wife uh, says, You may struggle, but you will never quit. Okay, uh, Patrick, journalist, uh, journalist, and uh, uh, you. in, uh, uh, you're welcome, Richard Derim. Journalist, and in particular, photojournalists uh, are those who witness all kind of uh, unlawfulness and bullying and persecution and tragedy. And the audience, I'm here today with Mr. Patrick. Well, it's director and creator of the Exodus Deja Vu project. Exodus Deja Vu virtual, the sixth edition of the project, is starting today to uh, honor uh, the World Refugee Day. Uh, the public can visit the 3D exhibition online, the Exodus... Uh, uh, dot, oh no, um, Exodus Deja dot com. Event. Right? Okay. Uh, and series of live interviews with the photojournalists of the project will be held today and during the upcoming week. And so the question is coming. Can you explain us what Exodus Deja Vu is in a nutshell and why you choose this name for your exhibition? Very good. Well, um, so thank you. Thank you, thank you so much for the opportunity to, uh, to open, actually, um, Exodus Déjà Vu 2020 
um, virtually, but we are really um, now to all together here. Um, we have visitors, we have people looking at us and listening to us from all around the world. So thank you for everyone and thank you especially to you for what for taking the time um, as a journalist, Always. as a professional to um, um, to share your your vision and to um, and to help us to um, uh, to go on with this project. We're just opening Exodus Déjà Vu, um, so um, uh, it's the launch, um, and it's yes, it's www Exodus slash Déjà Vu dot com. So you can go to the exhibition like this, or you can do slash uh, virtual virtual two thousand twenty. Okay, so we are presenting and we are um, introducing you 12 uh, photographers um, uh, in the exhibition um, who are bringing um, actually work from different uh, part of uh, history, but also different part of uh, the world. Um, I like to <clears throat> give the name of um, every um, photographer. Um, just to take the occasion, as we are starting our, um, our talk, we have um, Shoshkun Aral um, uh, from Turkey, we have Sergei Ponomare from Russia, we have uh, Jin Chung uh, from Korea. Um, actually, I can even give you um, uh, Shoshkun Aral is the work from 1991 um, in Iraq. Uh, we have Sergei Ponomarev with the Syrian who, um, um, uh, from um, uh, going from uh, Syria to Europe. Um, we have Roland Neveu, we have Issa Touma. Roland Neveu is the work of 1979, the, the fall of Phnom Penh in Cambodia. We have Issa Touma just before the war in Aleppo. Uh, he's actually right now in Aleppo. Uh, we have Greg Constantine about the Rohingya uh, in Cox Bazar. Uh, we have Jin Chung uh, about um, the woman raped uh, who uh, come from Sudan um, in a camp in Uganda. Uh, we have uh, Sutep uh, Kristana Saverin uh, about uh, the Rohingya um, in Asia uh, because it's uh, really a, um, um, an, a continent issue actually and a, and a world issue. Yalda Mweri um, from Iran actually she brings work from Africa, from Somalia. And uh, Guillermo Arias um, who will be uh, in an interview today um, live from Tijuana. Uh, so he's from uh, Mexico, uh, who brought the work about the caravan. Um, uh, and we have uh, Fabiola Ferrero, who is in Bogota, who will be in the interview on Monday. Uh, mm -hmm. she's work she works on the Venezuelan price uh, between uh, the refugees who actually uh, left Venezuela to Colombia, mainly. Um, and we have Atigan Ozal, who will be with you later, 6 o'clock. So um, I'm very proud and I'm, um, uh, I like to um, uh, thank all these photographers and all these people. Some of them became very, very good friends of mine. Um, they've been supporting the project since the beginning. So uh, thank you. Thank you so much. You just mentioned, I mean, uh, refugee uh, uh, project uh, 1991 after the Gulf War. Uh, he was the witness of the Kurdish refugee crisis, which is I'm talking about more than a half a million uh, Kurds uh, came to Turkey, uh, Turkish border from Iraq. And we were inside Iraq with Josh Kunabi, Josh Kunaral, and I was one of the uh, journalists who took this kind of um, tragedy. Wow. And yeah, it's, it's kind of like, a, I, I'm an amateur photographer, you know that. I mean, I'm not a professional, but I was the witness of one of the uh, biggest crisis in in in, in 20th century. Um, anyway, uh, Exodus Deja Vu has been touring uh, the world since 2016. Uh, if I'm not wrong, can you tell us about how and why you started this project, and give us a brief history of it? Okay. 
Um, you know, I, I, I've been into, um, um, by the way, I've been into photography many years ago. Um, I, I, maybe I've been sharing this with you uh, as a photographer a long time ago <laughs> in Paris. Um, still, but, so still was, you're a photographer. I was in different <laughs> things in my life, but I always be interested about art and, and culture. And uh, so I've been an entrepreneur for many, many years. And uh, I'm saying that because um, uh, I opened an art gallery here in Kuala Lumpur about eight years ago. And then we opened an agency to work on other projects um, who will not be under the umbrella of the, the gallery. And um, I'm not saying that Exodus is the first project of the agency, but it's one of the first projects as an exhibition and as actually um, a construction of um, different work from different photographers and also uh, building a, a, actually a story. Because I think um, your project will certainly work if we talk about, or if you ask me how a project can work better than another one, I guess it's about the connection that you are creating uh, around the work then you will be showing. Um, and uh, so the project start, actually, Shoshku <clears throat> uh, Naral, again, Shoshku Naral. Shoshku Naral was invited um, as a special guest to talk about his career uh, in 2015 in Kuala Lumpur. I was organizing a special evening, Shoshku uh, Naral special evening um, in Kuala Lumpur. It was a great evening to talk about his career, to talk about photography, and it was the time that I, I saw his work from 1991. And it was the time of the, the, the war in Syria. It was really the, 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 begin, the, the strong beginning of the, the war. And, um, um, and I was already thinking of doing something who can be actually related with uh, refugees. Um, and when I saw his work, I started to talk with him and I was really interested. Um, and I talked about like always, you know, the story, the history of it, you know, the year, the people, uh, how, how it was, you know, and so we were talking about it. And then I told him about the idea of working with photography and uh, um, uh, to, uh, to have this thematic of the refugees. And uh, he find the, 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 the idea very, very good. He's actually uh, the one who's been from the day one um, pushing me or supporting me. Uh, and this is how he, because it's a very, uh, very, uh, very quick, uh, he, he actually introduced me, Roland Neveu, uh, just to say, hey, contact my friend Roland Neveu uh, to tell him about your project. And, you know, in actually only two or three weeks, I was already in contact with um, Roland Neveu, Shoshku Naral, and then I met with, uh, from somebody else, I met with Sergei Ponomarev, uh, Issa Tuma was introduced by another friend, it, 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 I don't know why, but things got together and, um, and, you know, I was not pushing it, you know, I was really doing my research, my homework to understand, to see um, Sir, the, the, the first, the, the big, big group of Syrian, they were already on the way to, um, to Germany and it was really tense moment. Um, right. And just for the story, when Sergei Ponomarev sent me the 15 works, because I asked 15 works per photographer, um, and we signed a contract as well. Um, and you know, it's a non-profit uh, uh, project. So yeah. financially we are very limited, but the photographer, uh, they don't ask any money and they just want to participate and bring the 15 work. And once I get it, send me the work, a week later, I receive a message on my phone and say, oh, you should check on the word uh, Pulitzer award. <laughs> and I saw Pulitzer, and I saw one of the work that Sergei sent me getting the Pulitzer in 2016. <laughs> so I, I say to myself, okay, we have to continue because, you know, you, you have to have a balance. You have to have, you have your excitement. You want to right. do things. But at the same time, you have to also look the access, the direction, if this is possible, if this is really... Um, relevant, you know, I'm not saying Absolutely. that the thematic is not relevant, but how do you right. create and what are you going to present, you know? So yes. this Absolutely. is how it starts. And Kuala Lumpur 2016 was the first exhibition, the first Exodus Déjà Vu. And it was starting really with volunteers, with friends. You know, I remember, I don't know if she's with us uh, today, uh, Lorena, a friend of mine who is now in Germany, she was helping with the office 
and then other people for the edition of the book. Um, wow. And also some people help actually to print the work. So um, it was a bit challenging, like every exhibition when you curate, when you produce. You Big solidarity, do, yeah. You know, but um, it happened. And Shoshkun Arar was here. Uh, we could make Shoshkun to come. We could have Roland Neveu. We could have Issa Tuma. We could have Raman Roslan. So we had four photographers in the, in the exhibition. Um, and, uh, you know, and we start, um, we, we did the opening with UNHCR, we uh, different local partners. And it was the first one. And it was also the first time that we have our first calendar with uh, university like UITM in Malaysia, which is a big university, mm -hmm. with international school, uh, with, a, with the public. So we had different panel discussions. Um, so this is how we start. And the feedback was so, so good, so, yeah. so, you know, so encouraging. And um, the photographers was very happy, I remember. And, um, you know, uh, it, it was just very, very encouraging. And I said, okay, we have to continue. We launched the first book, uh, who was also um, um, supported by um, a partner locally. Right. And uh, this is how we start with Kuala Lumpur. So we start with a lot of... Uh, excitement because we had the photography, because we have the images, because we had the idea of having activities to meet with people, you know, and on the same time, I also learned myself how to work with um, institutions. I never uh, work on a project, non-profit, uh, with institutions like United Nations, with um, embassy, and, uh, and I have to say then, I have to say then, you know, thanks to them also, because um, they really um, support the project. And I think, you know, a project is certainly successful when you have all, like a teamwork, you know, you have journalists, right. you have institutions, you have photographers, you have all together make uh, the blind. And then we went to um, Ankara. Ankara was really the first um, big um, exhibition for us because right. we were invited for the 20th of June exactly like today. So <clears throat> this was three years ago. We were at the CERN Modern Museum, which is a beautiful place in Ankara. And, uh, you know, again, we transport some, this, some uh, photographers and um, we had different um, um, uh, panel discussions. And again, uh, it was a lot of public, it was a lot of people, it was a lot of interest, it was a lot of media. Um, uh, you were one of the media actually who um, 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 uh, interviewed us live uh, from Istanbul to Ankara. So it was a lot of interest. So again, after um, 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 uh, Ankara, we went to Istanbul. So this was 2016, 2017, and then November, uh, June 2017. Then November 2017, we were in Istanbul. Again, it was a, a lot of people at the opening. It was panel discussions. We had a, a very good conference panel discussion at Bilge, Bilge University. Yes. In Istanbul. It was fantastic. It was the first time I was creating what I call a satellite exhibition. So because we had one place with an exhibition and we had still work from photographers, so I could do another exhibition. And then we went to Bangkok uh, in February uh, 2018. It was a big place uh, so we could have more work um, and then we had Chiang Mai in 2019. What I have to say is, <clears throat> you see, it's a, it's a, war, it's a, it's a project to, who are evolving, progressing, because we start with five photographers. And today right. um, we are reach 12 photographers. Um, the project is aimed to continue, of course, but it's to, uh, it's, it's, it's to actually emphasize on the work and the photographers that we have today. The project is not about to add and add and add more photographers and more photographers and more photographers. Maybe we will change, maybe we will have other photographers, but the idea is to stay in the number like 12, 12. it's a very good number. And so we have enough work, it's already very strong. And so more than 20 panel discussions we've been organizing around uh, these four years. We had more than 10,000 visitors. Uh, we had a lot of um, 
um, activities with universities, schools. So we have different ages of uh, uh, students. So, uh, you know, um, today uh, we are supposed to be in New York, uh, the United Nations <laughs> building. So this was actually a really? uh, 2020 exhibition oh my God. in New York. And um, that COVID you know, yeah. life is life. You know, who, who will know, who will know what, what was going to happen, you know? Absolutely. So it happened and look today from, from, from a challenge, from a crisis, we're having a new opportunity because this is an opportunity today that we have. It is. Because Exodus can be here today. And, uh, you know, and we have um, also the edition of the book. So we have ambition. We want to continue. Uh, next year, we will, have, uh, uh, we will have the ambition to go to America. This was normally this year. <laughs> so next yeah. year, we will go to New York. Um, and hopefully, we, I like to go also to South America and Central America. Oh, great. Um, this was actually normally excellent. supposed to be this year. <laughs> and so, you know, it's, we need to nourish with the plan. We need to nourish with, with results and activities. Uh, well, a couple of years ago, Aragular was also with us. Uh, he's a legendary photojournalist. Uh, that's what he called himself. I mean, he's, he, he doesn't say, I mean, I, I'm a photo artist, I'm a photojournalist. And Aragular was with us. I remember that. Uh, also, uh, Roland, uh, I met with Roland in Romania uh, at the end of the 1989, uh, witnessing the, uh, the last communist regimes uh, in Romania, the uh, Ceausescu fell down. Uh, you remember that the, wow. the that revolution was, I was in Romania. very young. Huh? I was very young. Huh? Really? <laughs> I remember we had only three channels in France. Only three channels in the TV. We had only one channel in Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the ongoing pandemic forced you to cancel Exodus um, Deja Vu's calendar for 2020. That's what you said. Uh, I mean, tough. It's a shame you had a, a re-announce to this year's um, physical editions. You reacted by creating the online event. Um, and you also mentioned uh, a lot of uh, idea behind this online edition. Uh, the next question will be... Um, uh, uh, the, the, uh, let's say this way. And, Nowadays, uh, pictures are m much more uh, present as they were before, and and the general public is massively exposed to this kind of images. Uh, this is in human misery. Uh, according to the United Nations um, uh, High Refugee Commission, uh, just uh, yesterday they said 1% of Humanity uh, displaced, uh, which is UNHCR's global transport says. It's a very sad, and I believe the exhibitions will never gonna catch the uh, people's uh, sensitivity or or uh, or uh, caution. I don't know. Uh, as the director of uh, creator of this exhibition, how do you think? of the role of photography in this context, do you think that we got uh, used to seeing this kind of images? Uh, are we still really seeing them? Uh, the number is more than a 35 million uh, refugees in this time. It's a, it's a very good question. I, you know, first of all, I think we are in a period uh, in our story of, um, you know, a, a, new, a new period of transformation. We had different part in the story like this. The last big crisis was, was in 2008, who was more financially and was more finance and economy. Uh, today, we are really in a crisis with kind of a monumental crisis with not just economy, with social, with um, everything. And, and, and <clears throat> you know, I don't want people to, un to, to think that uh, we are so, you know, excited, you know, to, to, to show work uh, from that thematic, particularly, uh, when right. I, because you know, when I say enthusiasm, you know, to to uh, of course, it's an enthusiasm from you know the professional part because we are people who create, we are people who who are interested of uh, documenting, 
uh, to witness what we uh, what we see and uh, and to support uh, professionals as photographers and photojournalists. So that's no question about it. But yes, today we live in a in a world where actually <clears throat> I think it's not particularly now, but for the last let's say maybe decade, but let's say the last five, 10 years, um, I can say that we, we can see much more violence um, in TV. We can see much more violence as images. And I'm afraid um, sometimes um, sometime I think about it, sometimes we have discussion about it with, with, with friends. We can have discussions also with you about it, um, about the banalization, the banalization of what we see and, and this is so um, uh, crucial because we live in a world where a lot of things is becoming uh, banal, uh, where it actually is, uh, it's not banal, uh, but because um, we have so much uh, in, 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 in the TV, we have so much in social media, people see so much things who has sometimes... Um, uh, only um, a connotation for violence, you know. Uh, we right. see, uh, you know, we see things who are out of the context. We see things who are a little bit manipulated. We see things who are uh, arranged, you know. Absolutely. I don't want to say, I don't want to talk about fake, you know. I just want to talk about images, also Image. photography, you know. Right. We see also a lot of photography who are savage, what I call savage photography. Um, Interesting. And we, um, I mean, the photographers that we are talking about and the photography we are talking about in Exodus Deja Vu, um, it is an opportunity. Today, actually, it is becoming even more an opportunity. Uh, Absolutely. I to, agree. To, to see the differences and to, to understand what is a profession, people who, um, with courage and professionalism, are doing in the world to, um, to uh, capture um, uh, this people life. It's about people life. It's about um, their, their house. It's about what they feel. So there, yes, we do also have emotion. Of course, our photography are very strong. Our work and the work we see, it's very strong. But it is about people life. It is about the, the, the reality. It is about witnessing. It is about documenting. So Absolutely. I think this is the differences between what we can see today and what we can show uh, with Exodus Deja Vu, uh, because our, uh, we are aimed to bring not only an exhibition and work, but also a platform so that people can uh, also listen, uh, can also have a, a reflection, you know? Mm -hmm. and, um, and I think this is very important. Otherwise, we're getting into this banalization and, and we need to resist on that. And I think, professionals and journalists, sometimes right. journalists also and media also... Well, we are saying to the people, don't normalize this kind of tragedy or um, massive uh, refugee crisis. I mean, don't normalize in your mind, you know, after seeing so many times on the TV screen. Yes, yes, I think so. And, you know, and, and the, 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 the things I, I may say is also the effect on the young generation, you know, on our children and the children of our children. <laughs> but the thing is, yes, um, this is the, the world now where we, this is a reality that we have. And, uh, and this is why I think Exodus has, or this kind of project, but at least now we're talking about Exodus as a mission <clears throat> to keep a direction to, you know, make sure always and frame, you know, mm -hmm. to work and the narrative also it's very important. I just just to, to, to mention, um, and, and, and maybe people who are listening to, to us today, um, at the first exhibition in Kuala Lumpur, uh, I decided to show, because I had the work, and by the way, we were the only one to show this work in the exhibition. It was the work of the little Kurdi. The work of the little Kurdi. And, mm -hmm. You know, for, for, a, for a curator, for someone who organized and, you know, uh, it was very, uh, you know, it was a bit strange. And on the same time, it was a decision to take, you know. You know, for me, it was not a, really a question if I can show or not the work. 
Why? Because I already, uh, I was already um, uh, preparing um, a frame where we had the work and the story and the narrative of Sergei Ponomarev with the Syrian, where we right. have uh, 91, where we have Isatuma, where we have Hollande. So for me, it was the first one. We show Kurdi, yes, it is a paradox because the photography of Kurdi go maybe against or go into the conversation about the ethic. Right. Right. If we talk about photojournalism, but here I'm not talking about that point, particular point. I'm talking about the image. I'm talking about uh, what do we see in the image. So now I show that in Kuala Lumpur and I decided not to show again. Now, if you ask me, are you going to maybe one day show that work again? And there was a discussion about it, actually. And I say, yes, I may show this work again. But now... But I will prepare, maybe I will work, I will put this work in a, in a closed room, in one room, and we will have a direction, we will have a narrative, we will have a, a writing to talk about, you know, to talk about what? To talk about the story, to talk about the people's life, to talk about, you know, we know where is the parents today in Canada, the parents of Kurdi, because this is the differences when we see violence, and we really look at people's life. So this is actually a, a kind of a reflection where people can maybe relate and understand Then, you know, what you see, um, it's also the reality of people's life. And I think at the end of the day, it is the most important. Um, the, the other things <clears throat> is also um, about, you were saying this before, it's about the situation with the refugee by the way. Um, I was reading the, the numbers, as you see the numbers. Uh, now, you know, I remember in 2017, the numbers of UNHCR, then I had the numbers, was 64 million. I mean, this is like, you know, a, a full number after you have, right. a two, you have a different part in the 65 million. Today, it's 71 million. Okay. And <clears throat> so the situation, yes, the situation, by the way, the situation is really alarming. Of course, it's so much things alarming today in the world. When you say, I mean, 71 million, almost like a Turkish population. Yeah, Turkey's population, almost, almost like a size of Turkey. Yes, it's, 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 it's not, it's, uh, it's not banal. And this is again, the, 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 the uh, this is not about, this is about certainly politics, but it's again about the banalization. You know, it's about, okay, environment is a priority. This is a priority. Economy is a priority, of course. Because Absolutely. Right now, so many people are suffering, yeah? But these people especially, are not out of Especially the in the United States, or especially in the United States, you know, I'm just mentioning uh, USA because uh, United States is the, you know, the biggest power and the most powerful, and, and also powerful about economy, powerful about, you know, uh, militarily, and, you know, they have... They have at least 41 million people unemployed. You know, they are looking, they are seeking for jobs. And also the violence continues, you know. It's not about race, I believe, right now anymore, you know. Also based on economy, people get upset, people are hopeless, and people uh, on the street right now in the United States. I agree, I agree. And, and you know, I think, you know, we are... A lot of government right now, a lot of things that you see, um, you know, in, all around the world in all these uh, top industrial countries, uh, they have a plan for the after, after world, yeah? They have the plan for the economy, they have the plan. And I think this is, of course, this is so important. And of course, you see also, um, you know, differences, you know, what is happening in America, what is happening in Brazil, what is happening in South America, what is happening in Asia. So, but... If we if we we go back to that subject that the the, the refugees, right? Um, we, we we what do we see actually? We see a reality that again it's now get it's about numbers. It's about numbers, and this is you know, see the banalization of what I was talking about. What we see, it's also about the numbers. I'm not you know because right now, who is the, who is taking care of the people who are in the camps? 
Um, you know, when you do some research and you learn, then you have camps in the, in the, in the, in the, in the border of Thailand who are there for more than 40 years. When you learn that you have camps for more than 50 years in Kenya, where you have people who come in the camps when they were children, right. and then they grow up in the camp, and they get married in the camp, and they have children in the camp, and they live in the camp, they have a school. So I am not here to say anything about what we should do about it, but I'm here to say then we should ask why we don't put in this moment, as we are in this crisis, as we are thinking of how do we transform the world to have a better world for our uh, young generation and our family, why not to put this uh, on the top of the list? You know, why not to really start from the humanity point of view? Because we are talking about humanity. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, Tur Turkey, Turkey is taking care of 3 million refugees. In more Lebanon, than. you have only Lebanon and Turkey, you already have more than 5 million people. I mean, and, and, and of course, whenever we talk about it, it is um, a bit taboo. And it is always um, uh, behind, you know, everything else, you know. Um, because it's all about numbers, it's all about the money, then we will have to take care of it. So, not to go back, not to go too much into the, the subject itself, um, I think it's important not to forget what is the reality. Um, and as I, you know, push myself on, you know, on that point of banalization, you know, and looking at the reality, and I think Exodus, maybe it's very, it's nothing, you know, I mean, Exodus is what? It's, a, it's a little things in the ocean, but... Absolutely, it's but it's a, it's a very important, it's but, another, yes. just a little Because I think uh, then drop. you and many other people and the photographers and what we are doing right now, um, it is aimed to talk to the public, so then we can have maybe different conversation. You know what, when you say Turkey, uh, let's say Turkey is the... Uh, the biggest uh, refugee uh, safe haven, uh, safe haven for the refugees right now mm -hmm. uh, in the globe. You know, the, the, the world um, leader right now as a host country for the refugees. I'm talking about more than four million people, and they are also um, supplying uh, so many food and uh, other stuff, clothes and uh, medical stuff to Syria and also Libya, and also Yemen. Uh, that's what I know. I mean, just, just, it's a, it's a lonely country, Turkey, right now, uh, supplying them. Uh, I have to mention this. And also, um, how do you see the uh, United Nations, uh, and also UNHCR's um, support to your project? I mean, are they giving a shoulder? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. They are. They are doing. They are giving shoulders since the beginning. It's a unique project. Hmm? It's a unique project. I mean, they have to uh, belong to you. I mean, uh, or support you. You know, I've been. I've been uh, talking to them in different part of the world. I've been uh, knowing more about the, the. It's a big house. United mm -hmm. Nations, big house. Absolutely, um, yeah. And and by the way, and by the way, and by the way. We need to support our institutions, no matter what, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, stupidly, we can say it's better than nothing. No, it is not better than nothing. It's not better Absolutely. than nothing. It's just everything. For some people, it's everything. For some people, it's nothing. So I think it's important to support the institution. So, yes, they've been supporting uh, since the beginning. Um, they don't have so much resources. They don't have, you know, department for project for cultural project and this and that. But, you know, they, they, yes, they've been supporting us. Um, um, this week we will have, uh, I think, three or four um, interviews with United Nations and the photographers. Uh, mm -hmm. So United Nations will be interviewing uh, some photographers. So, yes, I think it is important, it is important to also listen to them. It is important to, uh, um, um, uh, to, to treat them well. You know, um, when you hear story, you know, crazy story, but of course, sometimes it's, you, again, you, you hear things uh, about countries who stop to support UN. Um, you know, I think, you know, all this, I, 
we, we all hope that all this craziness a little bit is going to pass for, of course, a better life. But never to forget that this, that institution, United Nations uh, as such, uh, it is important. And I think it's important to continue to support. Um, of course, they will certainly, and they are working certainly on reform, on maybe, um, you know, doing things differently, maybe doing things because right now, the cries for them, for their work, it's huge. It's bigger than before. So, right. um, thank you, thank you for them. Because of uh, coronavirus, right? Yeah. Bigger than before. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, because new soft wars and human suffering are happening on a regular basis, do pictures tend to become more violent or more static, more striking? Do photojournals have to create this kind of images to be able to be even noticed and published in the global media landscape? Well, you know, like Roland will say, Roland Neveu, you know, he will say, you know, it's been always like that, you know? Like, mm -hmm. we, you know, Exodus Deja Vu, the history is going, going and coming and going and coming. Repeating and itself. And, yeah. and um, <clears throat> I like to say that <clears throat> it, it, just, just, to, just to, uh, to think about it, because we look at refugees, you know, especially from Europe. But, I mean, actually, this is everywhere. You know, they have a crisis of refugee in Malaysia. They have a huge crisis right now. It's tremendous. I mean, really crazy. It's scary. It's scary. Not well, just based on war, camp, right? In Myanmar, in Bangladesh, in Bangladesh, in right Bangladesh. now, you know. Um, so, um, so, yes, um, of course, the question... Cox's Bazaar, I believe, um, right? The name of the camp? Cox's Bazaar? Yes. Yeah, in Bangladesh. Yes, the Cox's Bazaar. Okay. And Cox's it's Bazaar. starting actually to have a COD-19 uh, just starting um, anyway. And you know, it's about how do you look, how, let's start with this. How do we look at the refugee? How do we look at these people? And that was always a, a, a thing that I, you know, you listen, I'm listening, listening. And then, you know, say, but why people are looking at these people like um, a, a third zone human being? Right. Or, you know, people who are, they are not us, you know, they are not human beings, they are refugees, you know. So, you know, I think this is linked such a shame. We were, yeah, this is what we're talking about. This banalization of what we see. Violence becomes the right. You right. Know? It's right. We have a right. I'm not discussing about the right. I'm discussing about how do we feel the emotion, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, when we look at something violent, you know, it was, a, you know, 20 years, 20, 30 years we ago. Have, we have to wear their shoes first. Yes. So I think Today, this fascin it's a lack of fascination, you know? Some people have fascination to, uh, to use um, uh, people, to use humanity who is in such a situation, like refugees, to, for politics, for, for other reasons. Um, and we hear that, we know that, we know that very well. But I think um, where we need to point ourselves into that story, into that subject, is uh, the individuals. Who are these people? These people are my grandfather. Th this guy is my grandfather. It's, it's, it can be my family. And, and, right. and, and, and I feel like that because um, <clears throat> when I, 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 my last speech on Exodus Deja Vu in Chiang Mai in Thailand was about my, my grandfather. My grandfather, my family from my, my, grand, my father's side had to flee from Spain um, because of, uh, um, 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 uh, what is his name, um, in, in Spain, the dictator. Um, oh, okay. Uh, Frank, no, Frank, uh, okay. Uh, oh, wait, it's not coming to my mind. It will come, it will come. They had to flee. He was an opera singer. And, you know, authoritarianism, et authorita etc. He was an opera singer. He had to live with his family and my father, who was just born to France, because otherwise he will be persecuted. So this is Franco. the reality of the people. When Francisco people Franco. Persecution and they got, 
you know, this kind of treatment and they, and they, they, they lose their life. But who are these people? These people who are going to Europe, they are not poor. Most of the people, right. they are not poor. Right. And by the uh, way, even if they are poor, even if they are poor, you know. You're so talking I, about, I mean, Franco. You mentioned the uh, dictator uh, Franco. Yeah, Franco. Evet. Francisco Franco. Uh, could you check the uh, Instagram uh, lifetime? Uh, I mean, are we getting an end of the time right now? How many minutes do we have? We're fine. We, we are, we're almost down. Almost? Almost. Okay, down. you're going to... You can record this. I mean, I mean, uh, live. Okay, yeah. great. Okay, so uh, let me ask the last question: How are you um, perceiving the evaluation of photojournalism and the coverage of refugee crisis at the future? Well, it depends how things will 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 uh, will turn. I mean, um, how can we also uh, travel? But I think now things are going to move and change anyway. We can travel a little bit more. Depends on the countries. But how do I see? I think, you know, um, unfortunately, um, um, it's not the... It, it may get worse, um, unfortunately. Um, you know, right now, Guillermo Arias, by the way, is in Tijuana, is covering um, the same refugee that he was covering for the caravan uh, from Honduras, Guatemala, etc. Um, mm -hmm. Right now, he's covering them on COVID-19 because these people now, they have to survive the pandemic, yes. you know? So, you know, the photojournalist is certainly one of the most important profession in the planet, in the world, as journalists. Journalist, photographer, photojournalist is the most important. Today, like never before. So how do I, how do I see... I think, you know, I wish then photojournalists will do more reportage about all the beautiful things in life we have. And a lot of photojournalists are also reporting about a lot of things who are moving forward to, to give hope and to help people all around the world, you know. We can see from many, many medias, you know. Um, but, you know, for the refugee, um, we need... We need to be strong. Um, these photojournalists, the people who are dedicated to, to this cause and to this work, they need to, they need to, they need to have courage. They need, to, they need to continue. We need to continue to document. We need to talk more about it because we have so much things who are not relevant in this world. Talking, talking, talking. And it's become relevant. It becomes so important, you know? Important. So yes, we should absolutely. always, as professional, you, photojournalists, and especially the media, um, never forget. I know, of course, we know we need, to, we need to sell the story. We need to, of course, we live in a world, in a world where a lot of things is about competition. But we should always balance and never forget that some subjects are not there forever, absolutely, but some subjects like the refugees and what we are talking about today are there to to get better. You know, when I hear the story, uh, yesterday we had an interview with Raman Roslan, one of the photographers with the French uh, uh, radio, mm -hmm. and he was telling a story of one of the, one of the uh, person that he took in the camp in Lesbos. Um, he Greece. Still, after three years, uh, in Greece. He's still in sending Greece. messages to uh, Raman Roslan. Now he lives in Germany, he's finishing his studying, he already find a job. Uh, the family is well, the, everybody is working, everybody is happy. The small children, they are following the, the school. They all speak German. They all very happy. And, you know, and this is what I wanted to say um, is, you know, people are coming as a refugee. Maybe for some people, they get very scared. Oh, my God, these people. Absolutely. You know what? These people, they just want to work like me, like you, and they will become normal. They will become normal, and we forget about it. We will forget about it. So absolutely, I agree. That's 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 the things. You have such a big heart. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I would like thank to you, thank friend. you very much, Patrick, uh, once again for giving a chance uh, and for giving me a place um, in this year's activities of this year. Um, very well, uh, valuable and extraordinary project. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And good luck. And I love to see in Istanbul uh, 
as soon as possible. Tamam, süper baba, süper. Thank, Thank you, you so much for. Thank you so much. I appreciate so much. We all appreciate it. I will be on your on your um, interview today with Atil Gang. Um, everyone who is listening to us, don't forget we have a calendar. We have an interview. Um, this is the best way to support the project is to uh, send us messages, coming to the interview, and um, uh, and supporting us. Nothing else. Uh, thank you again to the photographer and and thank you to you Fuat and I see you soon in um, in Istanbul. In Istanbul. Thank you very much. I appreciate Come it. On. It's a big honor for Come me. On. And please uh, repeat one more time about your uh, exhibition internet address. www.exodus slash exodus deja vu. Sorry, exodus deja vu slash deja vu. No, exodus slash deja vu slash virtual. 2020 www.exodus slash deja vu.com or slash virtual 2020. Thank you. You're so kind. Thank you, Lash. Thank you very much. So, Good luck and have a nice night. In Malaysia, it's an uh, evening right now. Thank yes, you very yes, much. Yes, yes, yes. Thank Bye -bye. you.